Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to project number three of 25 Beginner JavaScript Projects. In this application, we're going to be creating a random quote generator. So when we click on this button, we're going to generate a new quote. I created a website dedicated to the projects that we're going to be building in this series. You can find it at jsprospect.com. I also talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to become a web developer. And you can even access the tutorials directly from here. So if you wanted to watch this one, just click it and you can watch the tutorial here. If you want to learn more about these projects, you can click here. And I wrote a small article that talks about each project. You could even test the project out before you build it. So let's say that you wanted to test this one out. You can click here and you can test out the project. If you want to learn how to host your applications the way I did here, I wrote an article that shows you how to do it. So just click on this link and it's going to take you to this article, host your website for free with GitHub pages. And here I show you the steps that you need to take to host your application on GitHub pages. There's only four steps, so it's actually very simple to do. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a folder and we're going to call this one random quotes. Let's open up our Visual Studio. And and let's open up that folder. Let's create our three files. index.html style.css and script.js let's start with our html let's click shift one enter now we're going to link the css and javascript file to the html file and we are going to use bootstrap for this project so let's go get the bootstrap CDN. So just tap that in and you're going to click on this link, quick start bootstrap. We're going to copy this link here and we're going to paste it up here. So just control V to paste that. And I'm going to minimize this so we can see our changes in real time. Let's right click and open with live server. All right, we can get started here inside the body. Let's create a container. Of course, we know that we need a, a div element for that. Let's create a class and call it container. Within this container, we're gonna create another container. So let's create another pair of div tags. Let's give this a class of quotes. And within this container is where our quote and the name of the author is going to go. So for the quote, we're going to create a P element. And let's just type in anything for now, just so we can have something to work with. And let's give this an ID of quote, because we want to access this later through JavaScript. So we can actually insert a quote in there. For the author name, we're also just going to insert some text in there for now. And let's also give this an ID. This one we're going to call author. And we also are going to include a button, but we don't want this button to be inside of this container because this is where the quotes and the name of the author is going to go. So we're going to create another div element strictly for this button, but we're going to create that right under our container here. So let's go over to bootstrap. So just search for bootstrap buttons and click on this first link and go ahead and select the uh, button that you want to use. I'm going to use this info one. So I'm going to copy the HTML for that. 
and I'm going to paste it in here. All right, let's change the text. Let's make this say generate quote. And of course, when we click on this, it's going to generate a new quote. So we have to call in a function when we click it. So we're going to use on click. And the name of the function, let's call it generate just to keep it short. And that's going to do it for our HTML. All right, let's get started with the CSS. The first thing we're going to do is change the color of the background. I'm going to go with hexadecimal color code 06 B C C one. Go ahead and choose whatever color you want to use. You don't have to use the same one that I'm using. For the container, I'm going to create a border just to help you see the changes that we are making here. And the first thing we're going to do is change the width to 95%. And we're also going to set the height to the size of the window. So we're going to set height to 100 VH. And we're also going to make this container a flex box. So let's leave that like that. And actually for the button here, I forgot to do something in my HTML file. So we're going to do that now. So let's go right here, the div element that contains the button. And we're also going to add a style to it. So this is just to show you that you can access CSS directly from HTML. So here we just use text align center. And now the button is in the center of the screen there. All right, moving on to the quotes container. Let's also give this a border to help you understand more about containers. This is really going to help you um, build responsive websites. That's why I'm creating these borders. But of course, we're going to we're going to get rid of them before we are done with the application. And let's change the width of this quotes container to 900 pixels. And we're also going to change the height. Let's go with 450 for that. And let's place this container in the center. So we're going to use margin auto for that. And we're also going to make this container a flex box because we want to be able to control where these elements that are inside this container are located inside of this qu quotes container. So let's turn it into a flex box. And the first option we're going to use is flex direction. We want to use column. That way they're stacked on top of each other like that. And we're also going to use a justify content center to place the items in the center of the screen. Now we want them to be in the center down here in the actual center here in the middle. So for that, we're going to use align items center. All right, let's also give it some padding, but not from top to bottom. So we're going to leave that at zero. We want the padding to be from left to right. So let's go with 50 pixels for that. And we're also going to change the color of the font that's inside this container to gray. And let's also change the background color. I'm going to go with hexadecimal color code F4 E D E A. And I'm also going to give this a border, which is kind of funny because we gave it a border just to show you what is going on, but this container actually does need a border. It's going to be kind of thick, 10 pixels solid. And I'm going to go with color code F4 D1 A. 
all right so we can get rid of this border now we don't need that anymore we have another border to look at now here and that's all we're going to do with that container now for the actual text here we're going to start with the quote let's just change the font size to 1.5 rem so each rem is equivalent to 16 pixels so if we go with 1.5 then that's going to be equivalent to 24 pixels all right for the h3 we're also going to change the font size to 1.5 rem and technically we can actually copy this and just place it here that way we don't have to repeat code and last but not least we have to make sure that this looks good on a telephone so it looks good here but what about if somebody wants to look at it in a phone so we're going to use a media query we're going to set a max width so at 480 pixels or less we want to change the font size just to give the user a better experience so we're going to actually just change the font size so we're going to copy this and we're going to paste that here and instead of 1.5 we're, we're just going to go with one for that and just to show you what it looks like we're going to go over to responsive design testing we're going to copy this url and we're going to paste it in here click enter and this is what it looks like at 320 i never really worry about 240 because i don't really know anybody that has a phone that is that small usually nowadays everybody has a phone that is 320 or something higher like this is i think a small tablet 768 is an ipad so i'm more concerned about 320 here and as we can see everything looks good here's our button i just need to remove this border but that's going to be it for the css all right let's knock out the javascript so remember we have this button generate quote when we click it it's going to generate a new quote so with that button we're going to be calling on this function generate here so we're going to create that here generate so there's different ways to solve this this is just how i'm going to solve it it doesn't matter if your solution is a little bit different or if you know that you can solve it a different way that's completely fine the way that i'm going to do it is i'm going to create a dictionary this is actually a data structure that is i believe is underutilized but i think they're great so that's why we're going to use them here all right now we have to look for free quotes so let's just type in free quotes it doesn't really matter which website you choose just as long as they have free quotes so i'm going to click on that first one and go ahead and find some quotes that you like it doesn't really matter i'm going to choose this one by deepak chopra and let me type in his name here deepak chopra so this is our key and this is our value let's control v to paste that and if we want these quotes to display on our project we have to include single quotes in here all right let's go grab another quote i'm going to use this one just choosing random ones here this is by c.s lewis so i'm going to type that in here c s lewis let's put our single quotes and i'm going to grab one more i don't want to spend too much time with selecting quotes copy and pasting 
So this is going to be by Jenny Valentine. All right, let's type her name in here. Jenny Valentine. All right, let's put single quotes. And that should do it for that. All right, here comes the fun part. Let's actually solve this. I'm going to create a variable called authors. And the way that I'm going to go about this is I'm going to use a built-in function called keys. And I'm going to pass it the name of my dictionary, which is quotes. And that's going to generate an array with all of the keys. So the keys, of course, are the authors. That's why I named this variable authors. And I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to create a console log and I'm going to pass the authors array here so you can see what that does. So I'm going to right click inspect. Let's click on console and let's click this button. And here's the array. It has all of the authors. All right, let me show you what we're going to do with that now. Let's create another variable and we're going to call this one author. What we're going to do is we're going to select a random author from this array that we just got. And we're going to use the math floor together with math random. And we're going to multiply that by the authors length. So that's going to generate a number between zero and two, which is the size of the array. And I'm not going to explain what this is doing here because I explained that in detail in project number two. So if you're curious as to what that is doing, go watch video number two. All right. So now we have the author and remember we're using a dictionary. So if we have the author, which is the key, then we can grab the value, which is the quote. So just include the name of the key, which is the name of the author. And you're going to get the, the quote. All right, we have the author and we have the quote. Now we just have to display it on here whenever the user clicks on this button. So to access the quote, remember we gave it an ID of quote here. And we gave the other one an ID of author. So that's how we're going to access that. So let's do document, get element by ID. And of course, that's quote. And we're going to set the inner HTML to quote for that one. And let's just copy that and change this to author and this to author as well. All right, and that should do it. Let's click this now. And there's our first quote. And of course, when we click this, it's probably gonna generate, you know, the same quotes because it, there's not that many in here. And you know, one more thing that I'm going to add in here, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to my CSS and in this container, I'm going to use text align center. So the text could be inside, <clears throat> could be in the center like that. All right. That's going to be it for this project. I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you guys in project number four.